brand protection is important for any advertiser. So we were happy to hear recently when Google announced that they were updating brand settings within Google Ads. Now, it's only available for two campaign types, so it's not as specific as we would like to be. We will show you what those two campaign types are and how the new brand settings work differently between the two campaign types. We will also say that these new brand settings will favor the advertising campaigns that really look to expand reach and build awareness. We don't have as much control as we would like, but it's always better than nothing. So let's hop into Google Ads and then we will look at what these new brand settings are and how you may want to use them for your campaigns. Before we start looking at the campaign settings within Google Ads, I do want to talk about a few points that are important to know when you're dealing with the new brand settings in Google Ads. The first point is understanding how the brand settings differ between Search and Performance Max. So for Search, the brand settings will restrict traffic so your ads will only show for certain search queries. Instead of a negative keyword list, this is pretty much like a keyword approval list. And then for performance max, the brand settings will give advertisers the opportunity to exclude certain brand queries for search and shopping. Pretty much saying, do not show our ads for search and shopping if these search queries are ever typed in. And then there's one last important thing to note that I do want to talk about. And I have the source at the bottom because this is taken directly from the Google Ads help page about the new brand settings. Understanding the difference between brands versus keywords in the eyes of Google Ads. And as we can see, Google says brands are organizations or trademark goods and services that have distinct branding, logos, or websites. Understand that when they're talking about brands, it's more than just words. It's more than just text. Keywords are the words or phrases that customers or potential customers will use to search for your products, your goods, your services. And then we see below, when we look at building brand lists in the account, it saves you the time from having to enter in all the misspellings, different variants. I like to look at it as brand lists are kind of like an entity for a particular brand or topic. So let's get into the actual Google Ads interface so we can go through the two different campaign types that are using the updated brand settings to see exactly what we're talking about when I'm mentioning the differences between the two. The first thing I want to talk about when we're looking to control traffic for specific brands is to create a brand list. In order to do that, we need to go up to Tools and Settings. If you are in the newer view, it's probably just Tools. And then under the Shared Library column, we see Brand Lists. In our demo account, we haven't created one yet, so I'm gonna look at creating a brand list. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna make this as generic and familiar as possible. Go ahead, name your list whatever you want, but when you drop down to brands, you can start entering brands you want to include in this list. So if I go over to the question mark, and this goes ahead to the last slide I showed you before we hopped into Google Ads, brands are more than just keywords. It could be companies, services, and products. So let me start entering some other company names. I just typed in number one competitor, Pepsi, and then I can add this to the list. Let's do another one. Mountain Dew, my mouse is already there. Okay, one more option. I'm good here. Feel free to enter as many as you want. Probably should call this like Coca-Cola competitors or other companies, whatever. Do what makes sense to you in the list that you want to create, and then I could save this list. So here we see I have three brands included, the three I just entered, and I'm not using it in any campaigns right now. Remember, there's restrictions for search, exclusions for performance max. But that's one example of a brand list. And I'm going to rename this really quick just to make it easier to keep the differences. Okay, to do that, I just clicked on it. There was a blue pencil button, and I edited the name. Now I want to create a different list for potentially a different type of use within a campaign. Having a new one, this time I'll name it properly right off the bat. Making a list of just my brands and products. Now look at this as an example, pulling from a Wikipedia page and not from an official brand page. So again, looking at more of entities and websites instead of the actual keywords. Another Wikipedia page. There's a different flavor, a different product of ours. Ours, like I'm pretending like I work there. I should probably say right off the bat, I have no affiliation with Coca-Cola, just using it as a demo for this video. I saw one on the last one. There we go, Coke Rewards, whatever. Adding in several options there. I'm going to save this list. Now I have two lists. Again, all hypothetical here for my brands and products or services, whatever you've included that could be part of your own company, and then a brand list for anything that may be with my competitors. In your case, you may want to create a list of something that it may not be a direct competitor, but depending on the industry, sometimes there's overlap in search terms on the branded side. We've had clients before that there are several other brands out there in a variety of different industries that all have the same brand name. When you're running brand campaigns, you get tossed within that industry a lot, and it's a pain in the butt to manage negative keywords and 
placement exclusions and all that. So maybe you need to create a brand list of all those other brand names that have similar names to you, but they have nothing to do with you. Research those options too. But I'm gonna go back to the main Google Ads home screen so I can start show you how to include these in certain campaigns. Okay, and first I'm gonna start with a search campaign. To do that, let's create a new campaign. Click on new campaign, choose your objective, choose whatever goals you want. This is our demo account, so ignore all those warnings. We don't really use this. Gonna click on search, go ahead and name your campaign. I'm gonna name it like this specifically. You're gonna see why, and I'm gonna click continue. And since I'm not gonna walk through a whole campaign setup, I just wanna talk about the brand settings. I'm gonna skip this bidding section and click on campaign settings. And then I'll have to scroll all the way down because if we click on more settings, scroll down again, there at the very bottom is brand restrictions and we see that there are no brand lists applied. But I can't apply brand lists yet. Why? That is because you cannot apply brand lists unless you have broad match keywords turned on for your entire campaign. There's the kicker, right? And that's exactly why I put broad within my campaign name. I did say in the intro that the brand settings are really the most useful when looking to cast a wider net and broaden your reach a little bit. So that is why this restriction is only available for broad match keywords within the campaign. So now we can go back down and apply brand lists. You can see we can add up to 10, but I only created the two. But in this instance, I'm creating a brand campaign and even though it's broad match, AKA giving Google a lot more control about which search queries we show up for, I am telling Google to only show our ads to searches related to the brands or products that I have included within this brand list. If I click on next, you'll see when I create my ad group, you will still go in and add keywords. But we see down below, they're letting us know that this ad group is restricted by the brand list that we have set up at the campaign level. Doesn't matter how many ad groups we apply. If I try to add any phrase or exact match keywords here, we see the warning in the blue box. They're all gonna be converted to broad match anyway. Now I use this as a brand search campaign example, and then you would go create your ads, finish the rest of the campaign setup, and then you could launch. As always, it's still broad match. Go back and review your search query reports with whatever search queries we can still see. Just because you have a brand list added doesn't give you the right to ignore reviewing search queries and looking for negatives. Still gonna be an important part, especially when you're using broad match. I'm not gonna save this campaign, I'm gonna X out. Okay, if I open up this menu a little bit, I just wanna talk about if you want to go ahead and potentially edit the campaign settings, you can just click on whatever campaign you may wanna change. If this type of search campaign that is broad match and you can use brand list as a restriction, if that seems appealing to you, I clicked on a campaign, you would need to go back to your campaign settings and then here is where you'd see broad match keywords. I understand this may not be the best example. I can't change this because I don't have a marketing objective selected. I'd have to change it to a lead sales website traffic, one that can use conversion focused automated bidding. So the marketing objective does matter. Once I change the marketing objective, I can turn this on, click on my additional settings, and then there's the brand restriction. So pretty much what we saw when we were setting it up. All right, let me open up another tab because now I wanna go ahead and create another campaign, new campaign. And this time we're going to look at Performance Max. Just gonna choose website traffic again. There's my conversions and we want Performance Max. Let's go ahead and name it, whatever, something like that. Let's click continue. And then once again, we need to go to campaign settings, click on more settings, and then going down, we see brand exclusions instead of brand restrictions. If I open this up, of course you'll notice there's not a broad match keyword selection. This is Performance Max here. And yes, search is a part of it, but potentially, depending on what type of an account you have, shopping will also be included within Performance Max for the brand exclusions. So let's say I'm pushing brand. Maybe I don't want to show up for competitor terms. I know it is a potential strategy, but maybe we have a separate campaign for that. I'm trying to control the spend a little bit. Maybe the intent, maybe more brand focused ad message. So I want to try to be excluded from competitor search queries as much as possible. Can't stress enough, that is just one scenario. You have to think of how you could use this within your own campaign. And again, clarifying, we're excluding brands so our ads don't show on searches that mention these brands. As I said in the slides in the beginning, this is for search and shopping, but understand Performance Max also uses YouTube, Display, and Discovery. So it's not gonna be 100%. Then we would click on Next, finish creating your asset group, your audiences, budget, launch your Performance Max campaigns, and then just like search, you can always go back within the campaign settings and make adjustments to the brand restrictions. If I head back up to tools and settings one more time, 
Let's head back into brand lists. I had a feeling that was going to happen because I never saved the campaigns. They're not even in a draft. They're all discarded. But the brands list was used in the search campaign. So that would show up with one restriction. The competitors list was used in performance max. So that would show up as a one for exclusions if I would have saved it. Now, one thing I do want to close out with is the potential that you may not see any brands in there that are relevant to your account, whether you want to restrict them or exclude them. Let me go down and type a brand. It's just the microphone that's right in front of my face right now. But let's say that is also your brand name or a brand name you want to look up. But as you're scrolling down, you're not seeing anything that's related to what you're trying to target. Even though there is a lot showing up, even internationally, you can look at requesting a brand if you're not seeing one showing up within Google's list. Add the brand name, select a category, put in the brand's URL, and then you could submit it. You see right there, it takes four to six weeks to review a brand, and then if it is approved, it will be added to the library, and then you can go back and add the new brand to a current or new list. Are brand lists perfect? Absolutely not. Is it a lot better than what we used to get? Yes. And more and more, we are seeing announcements, especially from the Performance Max side, that allow us to have better control. Performance Max isn't going away, so we still recommend at least testing out this campaign type to see how much you can learn from it. And as you're testing things out, use some of these features to see how it impacts your campaigns. The setting is still pretty new. I believe it is still rolling out in a few accounts, so not everyone may have this yet. So give it some time, but at least you know what to expect when you start using these for either your search or Performance Max campaigns. If you have any other questions on how these new brand settings work, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.